My brother Jerry's had word from Ray Bacino, his Italian contact, about a big shipment coming in near the fish market. I knew Irish families were big, but I didn't expect to run into brothers in the place the size of Liberty City. Yeah, just thank the Lord you ran into Packy and not my other brothers. Packy's just a hood, but Gerald is into some serious shit. And Derek, he's the worst. If that asshole ever comes back from Ireland, I can't be held responsible for what I do. My brothers ain't no good, Nico. Trust me on that. You know what? Me and Packy get along. Maybe if doing what you do is good, then I want to be no good instead. I should meet the other McCreary's. Be careful what you wish for. Not this shit again. I heard this speech a million times. The McCreary's ran the city. People were scared to say their name, let alone come near their place in purgatory. Life was great. We were in charge. It's fucking true. I'd like to hear you tell Gerald that it's a boring story. My brother wouldn't take too kindly to that now, would he? You know Frankie, do you? I got a story for you if you do. Another fucking story. Shut up, Gordon. So, Nico, when Francis and Gerald was growing up, Frankie becomes an altar boy. He swears to this day that he wanted to serve the Lord. Jerry knows the truth, though. He only put on that cassock so he could pocket the change in the collection plate. Fact. That's Francis, down to a fucking T. I don't even know if he realizes what a crook he is. That sounds like the Francis McCreary I met. I bet. Model community leader my ass. You're just worried he'll start clamping down on you, ain't you, Paggy? I'd like to see him try it. Not gonna happen with the things Jerry knows. I think they're fucking with you, Paggy. They're laughing at you. You think they're having a laugh with Gerald, Gordo? You think even these Alderney Guidos would have the balls to do that? Them Guidos use you for what they like. If the peg asked Gerald to wipe his ass, he probably would. What's that say about you then, Gordo, if you're taking orders from Paggy? That don't mean shit. That was fucking beautiful. We did ourselves proud. My brother Jerry's gonna be fucking ecstatic. He is Nico Bellic. Nico, these are my two brothers. Well, two of my brothers, the two that count. Derek and Gerald. Hi. Derek has just returned to the family fold after a good few years in the old country, involved in the struggle. Sort of like you, I'd imagine. And Jerry, Jerry's the man. And you remember Michael, St. Michael? <laughs> yes, yes, it's uh, nice to meet you. <laughs> Nico's a trip, man. I met him through that Puerto Rican Coke dealer. So you want to involve him in family business? What do you know about him? What I know is he likes a fight and he ain't the fucking law. Oh. No offense, mister. That ain't good enough. Well, it's good enough for me. He's a good lad, Jerry. Uh, was I talking to you in Brett Halfwit? <laughs> I make a point of not talking to the unfortunate victims of brother-sister marriage. Don't you speak about my parents like that. Oh, you're like fucking Cleopatra. Fifteen generations of brother-sisters fucking, and you're so thick you take orders off my idiot brother Packy. Who's so stupid, he had to tattoo his name on his arm. If there is a problem, I'll go. No trouble. I have other ways of making money. There's no problem. Jerry yeah. just likes to think he knows best about everything, which is why he's been married three <laughs> times already and still won't admit he likes men. <laughs> <laughs> nah, no problem. I'll leave you boys to it. Don't screw up. Packy, take care of Derek. He's been away. And you? Nothing personal, but don't fuck with my family or I will fuck with yours. Gerald was very clear about the way things is going down, boys. Me and Michael are on the civilians. Derek and Nico are on employees. Really, Michael? You don't think I know that? And Jerry was right about you, Mikey. Your parents must have been twins to produce a kid as dumb as you. We won't forget it, Nico. Here's your cut. I tell Jerry you did good. He might give you a call or something. Nico, my boy. This is Packy's brother, Gerald McCreary. Jerry, how's it going? Good. Got a little business opportunity I need your help with. Come and see me at my mom's house. Use the back entrance. No one's here. Just you and me. 
Come in, come in. Beer? No, thank you. Oh, I agree. Let's have whiskey instead. Packy swears by you. Absolutely swears by you. Yeah? <sighs> you handled yourself well on the bank job. It was fun. Fun? Too much fun. That's always been this family's problem. Fun. Good causes, a good laugh, some stupid dream or some stupid distraction. <laughs> but never any fucking focus. Never. Hmm. Focus. <sighs> All we've ever been is bitches working for guineas, working for niggers, any asshole with a buck. A whole lot spent in a proper manner. Oh, yeah. Wine and women as quick as possible and remain a slave forever. Very poetical. Yeah, I know. National tragedy. But I got a plan. You down, friend? Maybe. What is it? Well, first up, we got to create a little problem between the Ancelotti's and their Albanian muscle for Jimmy P. You're gonna plant a bomb in Tony Black's car. Be rigged to a phone. Thing will go off when you dial a number. I want it to blow when they get back from their meeting. So the Ancelotti's think the Albanians did it. Exactly. Bombs in an alley off of Inchin Avenue. Get it? Give me a call. You know, Packy was right for once. I'm glad you're on board. So, Jerry, I got this bomb. All right, listen. The Ancelotti's and the Albanians are meeting in Little Italy. Tony's car is parked in an alleyway off of Feldspar Street. Now, you put the bomb in the trunk. Then follow the wise guys from their meeting back to the rest of their crew. Then you blow the bomb. Make sure no one walks away. It's easy, right? So easy. I don't see why you ain't doing this yourself. Nico, I wouldn't trust myself with this man. You ain't got a gallon of whiskey in your system. And besides, you're being paid, ain't you? Call me when it's done. Jerry, I hit the Ancelotti's crew real hard. Everyone got taken down. The rest of them should think the Albanian muscle is making a play. Yeah, I knew my brother wouldn't put his faith in a bum. They'll be at them elbows in no time. That's step one of the plans complete. Come see me. We'll talk about step two. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Nico! You made it, huh? <sighs> well, I'll leave you to your men's talk. I hope you impress each other. Hey, look at me. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. You'll do fine. Fine at what? Some gimp work for the Pegarinos. I owed them. Oh, please. I do it myself, but I think I'm being watched by the cops. Someone. I think I'm about to get pinched again. Shit, really? Yeah, it's happened before. I keep seeing the same car watching. All it means is someone's been speaking, we just have to find out who and make them stop. In the meantime, it chill things out for a bit. So, I need your help. Okay. Atta boy. Come on, I got something to show you. Now, Pegorino's a funny guy. Seems like his main motivation is putting his Guernsey crew on par with the five old families. Ancelotti's being the weakest, he's decided to stir shit up for him. Now, the Ancelotti's have an uneasy alliance with some Albanians. They use them as hitmen, thugs, bullies. I know the type. Much like Jimmy DeGuido uses us. So, what you're gonna do is disguise yourself as an Albanian and then go whack Frankie Garone, an Ancelotti longtime capo. Sure. Which Albanian? Uh, this one. Frankie Garon sleeping with the fishes. Anyone who saw us is going to describe the Albanian you got on ice. Man, nice work. Real nice. I'll let Jimmy P know about that. I'll cut you in on anything he throws my way. I don't know how long I'm gonna be outside, though. I feel like the cops might knock down my door any moment. Take me to the pen. 
Good luck with that, Jerry. Yeah, thanks. Please, look after my family if I go inside. Nico, I don't know if you've heard it, but my brother Derek's dead. No shit. Yeah, I just hope he was smacked out of his brain when it happened, because it wouldn't have suited him to be jonesing when he died. There isn't any good way to go, though, is there? I guess not. Gerald got arrested, too. They got him in the Albany State Correctional Facility. They took Jerry down? Don't worry, he's always being hauled in, but the charges don't stick. Come to Derek's funeral. It'd mean a lot to the family. It's today at the church in Suffolk. I'll stop by, man. I'll see you there. Remember to wear a suit, Nico. We can't have you dressed like a bum in the church. All right, man. We're burying Derek in the graveyard in Steinway. Let's get there. We're a family cursed. I'm telling you that now. How do you figure? One brother in jail, another killed, and the funeral attacked. You can't tell me this is just bad luck. Yeah, well... Jerry got stung by the law because of the shit he was involved in. I don't know why your brother got killed, but it looks like the funeral was shut up because of the shit Jerry was into. If you're going to fuck up an Albanian gang's arrangement with the Mafia, there might be some backlash. Consider us fucking backlash, then. Nico, Gerald McCreary here, calling from the Albany State Correctional Facility. Hey, Jerry. I heard you've been locked up. I'm sorry to hear that. We gotta discuss something. Put you on the visitors list here? You come down. You okay, kid? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm sorry about your brother. Hey, me and Derek had quite a few problems. But he was my brother, and it hurts. Poor fucking bastard. He believed in something. Which is better than me, I guess. Man, fuck, I'll miss him. How are you? In here? Fine. Time of my life. Goddamn time of my life. What you up for? Oh, a lot of things. Racketeer and armed robbery. A bunch of shit I never did because I was always a well-behaved family man who occasionally liked to drink, but nothing more. Of course. Like us all. Like us all. But the thing is... I think I should make some changes in my life. Stop with the drink. Put it down. Stop hanging out with the wrong sort. Can you help me do that? It is a final chance at redemption. Look, whatever you want, I will do my best to help. Good. Give Packy a call. He'll explain what, uh, I need guidance with the most. The areas where I have strayed furthest from the path. See ya. <laughs> Your brother told me to call you. Jerry wants us to kidnap old man Ancelotti's daughter. Some fake tan, dyed haired, guido loving slut by the name of Grace. She's selling her tasteful pink felter on auto erotica at the moment. Get online, organize a viewing, and snatch that bitch. There he is. Stevie, dump the car. I'll take this piece of ass. Guys, the beach better be worth the trouble. The pile's got some serious cash. And he pissed off Gerald. That's reason enough for me. Well, they better pay quick. I hate to think of the fight she'll put up if you try to cut her fingers off. Gordon has the bitch. I'm done with her. Thanks, Nico. My brother will be a happy man. I'll get things in motion. Be in touch. Hey. Yeah, so, uh, anyway, a friend of mine in here tells me that a close friend of yours, go you've been spending a lot of time with recently, swept the clean off her feet. Okay. Yeah, her old boyfriend wants her back. They always do. Desperately and quickly, and he's looking for her. I think you and her should go out on a glamorous date in Algonquin. Show her a new pad. Then, things will be okay between you two. But move your fucking ass, pal. Women don't like a chump, you get me? Hey. Yeah. What 
What's wrong? There's good news and there's bad news. Good news is everything's coming together. Bad news ain't gonna make a blind bit of difference to me. Uh, what do you mean? Do you want me to spell it out? No, I guess not. Thanks. Pack, you'll give you a call and explain. The ex-boyfriend of your girl is gonna agree to the divorce terms. Unfortunately, turns out he wasn't our only problem. Some other crap has turned up. I don't think I'll be getting out anytime soon. Been a great laugh. You look after yourself. Yeah. Well, Nico, that was a whole lot of effort for no fucking reward. Story of my life. It is the story of a lot of lives, Becky. I'm getting used to hearing it. See you, Nico. I gotta go break the news to Gerald. At least I'm gonna be on the other side of some bulletproof glass to him. But you know what? I'm still fucking scared. Good luck. You're getting to know the McCreary family pretty good, Nico boy. What's left of it, at least. You're good people. I like it how you have stayed together. All of us except for Francis. We stayed together when it was possible. I guess we got Ma to thank for that, taking us to church and cooking a big lunch for the family on a Sunday. When Jerry first went to Juvie, she kept laying a place at the table for him. That was until my Pa got into a drunken rage one week and threw Jerry's plate against the wall. What happened? Ma didn't even flinch, she just sat there. The next week, Gerald's place at the table was empty. What's going on, Nico? Usual kind of chaos. Sure, sure. Chaos we all know about. Jerry was the only one who ever tried to live beyond the chaos. What makes him different? I'm not sure, but it didn't do him much good either way. I think it was because of Derek. Why? Because Derek was a grass in England. He was involved in that business and he grassed on some people to avoid doing some serious time. And then went into hiding for years. I did not know that. No, he spun it different, but that was the truth. A grass to avoid doing time. That's why Jerry won't bend. He sees it as penance for the sins of his brother. Crazy fucking idiot. Did your family fight a lot growing up? Oh, fuck! I practically had to come out of the womb swinging. As the youngest, I was always getting my ass kicked by Derek, by Gerald. Francis tried to get me on his side, team up against the other two, he said, but I wasn't having any of it. Sneaky fucking bastard he was, even back then. People don't change, do they? One time I remember Frankie and Gerald going at it. There was just this feeling in the air, this feeling that told me this one ain't like all the other fights. Ah, oh, they didn't stop. There was a look in their eyes. It was fucking animal. What well, ended the fight? Who won? There ain't a winner in a fight like this. I thought the only thing was gonna end it was one of them dying. Ma had walked out when it started, didn't want nothing to do with it. It ended, they was in the kitchen. Jerry was on top, just smashing Frankie's head into the floor. Then he looks up and sees Katie huddled up in the corner, crying and shaking, and they both just stopped when they saw her. Kate stopped being a kid after that. You know what I mean? I think I do. What's up, Nico? Well, not much, you know. Problems, solutions. Usual sort of thing. You sound just like Jerry when you said that, all cagey and thoughtful, like I might be wearing a wire. I don't think you're wearing a wire. My English can be a bit bad. Sure, sure. But you're like Jerry, a weird combination of crazy maniac and thoughtful, controlled guy. Thanks, I think. I always liked Jerry. I remember one night years ago, a bit after my dad died, he came home covered in blood, like he'd been rolling around the floor of an abattoir. Must have killed someone. I guess. I never found out. And he had this weird look in his eyes, like he was possessed. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, Kate saw the whole scene, him insane, like he'd ripped a man's throat out. Blood everywhere. The showering, the burning of clothes. I think that was when she realized just what we were like. She was young then. She was never quite the same after that. No? No. Well, it must have been hard. Realizing your brothers kill people wasn't hard for me, but I always knew what life was like. It's always been weird. It's my dad's fault. He was an asshole. I know. You said. I didn't say everything. He molested Jerry and me. Then he killed himself. Nobody speaks much about it. Sorry. I used to think maybe Jerry had killed him, but I think he killed himself. Damn, this is all so embarrassing. Why did I tell you that? I think that's what really destroyed the family. The old man was a sick pervert. Fuck! I never told anyone that before. This is 
Gerald. Don't leave me a message because I ain't gonna listen to it, and I sure as shit ain't gonna return your call. Fuck off. Jerry, I didn't blow the bomb after Tony got back to his crew. Christ! Nico, they ain't gonna think the Albanians got beef with them if that car didn't blow. Come back to mine. Frankie got away from me, Jerry. I'm sorry. Damn, these guidos are slippery. Thought you'd have him for sure. All right, come back and meet me at Mars Place. <laughs>